today we'll start uh, our discussion with this uh, components of various uh, robotic systems right so you can just see this uh, the figure depicts one of the type of industrial robot or a manipulator this is known as a manipulator basically uh, manipulator in the sense uh, whose base is fixed so you can see uh, there is a base so this is fixed so if the base is fixed uh, robot uh, is known as manipulator is it fine so if the base of the robot mm -hmm. is fixed then it will be known as the manipulator and these are generally employed in the industries so apart from uh, the base which is the fixed you have various links and uh, various joints so this is the link so this is the link 1 and this is the link 2 this is the link 3 and here you have the link 4 and connecting all these links we have joints so this is the joint 1 this is connecting the base and the link 1 so this is the joint 1 j1 and this is the joint 2 this is j2 and here you have this as a joint 3 j3 and this is the wrist portion this is the j3 of course you have more joints on this end effector we'll just discuss this later on so if you can see this this is very much uh, similar to the human arm so that's why sometimes it is also known as the robotic arm but it actually does not look as a robotic arm. so that's why we call it as a manipulator technically but you can think that these these, these are your human arm this is the shoulder portion then this is the forearm this is the this is the wrist you can see this is the wrist so you have links you have joints then at last you have the end effector so this end effector will be actually uh, linked or joined to this wrist end effector is the last portion which is actually uh, either grabbing the things or it will be a tool will be attached it the tool may be a welding tool or it may be a paint spray so anything can be there so basically whatever job you want to do that will be uh, connected to this end effector or the wrist portion right so apart from this um, base, these links and joints, this end effector or the gripper. Gripper is also, you can uh, think of the gripper as uh, your hand gripper, right? The gripper like you have in your hand so you can grip the things. Similarly, you have the wrist which is similar to your uh, hand. Then apart from all these uh, mechanical linkages, you have a drive unit, right? So uh, before going to the drive unit, we'll uh, discuss about these uh, joints later on, just uh, after this slide. So there are different types of joints in uh, this manipulator, so we'll discuss it later on. So right now, uh, there will be a drive unit, which will be actually driving these links and joints, so that we can achieve a desired motion, and we can achieve the desired position and orientation of the end effector. And finally, the end effector can do the stipulated job. So again this drives unit or it is also known as the actuator which or it is it comprises of the actuators this is again similar to the human arm our human system also have a drive system which is actually you can see that we have muscles so muscles basically symbolize the mechanical system and you have some hydraulic system also like blood which is pumped with the help of the heart so similar to the human system again you have the drive unit in the robotic system also right so the drive unit basically uh, in robotics like in humans it can be of different types it can be uh, mechanical purely mechanical drive uh, which may consist of uh, gear and pinion arrangement and it can be chain drive it can be belt drives and uh, suppose if the load requirement is more then uh, this gear drive and chain drive don't work actually so we have to move to hydraulics or hydraulic drive so you have hydraulic drive uh, like you can uh, see in the jcb machine i suppose everybody might have seen the jcb machine you could see those cylinders piston cylinder arrangement there so oil is inside or uh, you might have seen the pneumatic uh, drive also right so we may use mechanical drive and if the load requirement is more then we can go for hydraulic drive and pneumatic drive pneumatic drive will be uh, 
and right uh, driven by basically the compressed air and apart from this when the load capacity or the load requirement is uh, low then we can have electrical drives also like we have dc motors generally we do use the dc motors the actuators which we call so we can have electrical drives also and uh, we can also have this uh, combination of um, both electrical and mechanical so it can be electro hydraulic also it can be electro pneumatic also so this combination is also there right so this is about the drive and um, to give command to this drive and further this drive unit which actually drives the whole system or whole robot or whole ro manipulator the command to the drive unit is basically given by the human brain which is actually symbolized by a controller here so this controller is actually the brain of the robot right in controller you will have the both the software and the hardware portion and which is actually making all the decisions which are required to drive the robot right so the decision making power which is similar to the brain power of human being is that type of work is done by the controller right so we have this drive and actuator and then we have this controller then the most important uh, nowadays is uh, uh, because we are not actually dealing with the hard automation which we were earlier dealing hard aut hard automation means there are fixed sequence of steps and uh, that particular machine actually executes that those steps and it cannot be manipulated later on while the machine is working or it cannot be changed so we are not much using hard automation they are specifically used for specific purposes but nowadays we want intelligent robot right and uh, we want that our robot should be intelligent it should collect the information it should interact with the environment that like yesterday we saw that we are having social robots which are interacting with the uh, human beings they are living in the society so we want that the robots should interact they should take their own decisions so we want that robot should be intelligent so for making the robot intelligent we use sensors right so basically the sensors are required to collect the information uh, from the environment so that we can uh, drive the control unit and we can make the robot basically intelligent basically you can understand this sensors to be as a feedback system right the robotic system or the control system is basically using uh, it is uh, getting the information with these sensors and the control unit will be actually processing those information and it will be accordingly taking the decision and that decision will be passed on to the drive unit and the drive unit will be driving the links and the joints and the uh, desired job will be done now these sensors are also copied from the human beings like uh, we have uh, some of the sensors uh, like we have eyes to see which is actually um, the camera does the work of the eyes then we have ears when we have nose we can sense through nose then we have skin that is the tactile sensor and all such thing we collect information with these sensors and then we use our brain to process those informations and then we do our daily routine work with the help of the decisions made by the brain similarly intelligent robots uh, collect information with the help of sensors process by the control unit and then executed by the driver or the actuator unit so this is how the robot works basically now talking something more about sensors actually we'll discuss each and everything in detail in the coming uh, lectures but just to give a just uh, sensors are basically internal sensors and external sensors right so uh, internal sensors are basically used to operate the drive unit and external sensors are specifically employed for collecting the information so the internal sensors which actually operate the drive unit are like position sensors you have velocity sensor you have acceleration sensors you have moment sensors or force sensors and you have gyroscopic sensors so these are internal sensors but external sensors like you have camera uh, you have infrared sensor you have range sensor you have proximity sensors so these are basically employed to collect the information from the environment right so we'll discuss all these things one by one uh, as the course up, uh, proceeds